today I have a follow-up to the last video. In the last one I said that I was implementing an average close where once we had an average profit on all trades together, I just closed the whole basket at one time. And I did mention that the other part of that suggestion was to increase the size of the trades as we get more trades. So I'm starting with the code for the average closing and I'm then incrementing the trade size as I get more trades in there. And this is a stepped increment. I'm not incrementing every trade. I'm actually going to have an input where you can specify how many trades must be open before each increment happens. If you've just started watching with this video, I am building on code that has already been created in earlier videos. There is a playlist for the entire series, but you don't need to watch every video just to get to the beginning point here because many of the videos simply implement a suggestion and then I go back to the base code again to start with the next. There will be a list in the description to the video that shows how you can get to this particular video through the stages of actual code development. So if you want to just go through from the beginning and see how this code has been developed, check that list in the description and then you can watch just those videos. So let's move on to the code now. This won't take very long and we'll see how it runs. Uh, this should not take too long. I'll start with uh, creating a new version, 2.021 I think I'll make it. So now that I've created a new version, um, I think the first thing I'll do is just set up the inputs for this. Alright, so what I want to do is increase the volume by 0.01 every three trades. And obviously you can change these in the inputs, but it should only increment when we have multiple of three trades open on a single leg. And then I think I just need to modify leg. And I think all I'm going to need to do is change the volume on opening a trade. In here, instead of using INP volume, I'm going to call a function for this. So I'm going to do this because um, as I'm doing this demonstration, I'm just setting this up for a linear increment where each new trade gets 0.01 additional lots. Uh, but you might want to change it to an exponential and maybe I'll show how to do that at some point. Um, but I'm making it a separate function because it's much easier than to just change that function to increment in a different way. I'm going to pass in four things. I'll pass in the volume, the increment factor. So volume is the base volume the increment factor, which will obviously go up as we get through more trades, the number of trades that I want to open or to have open before I do that increment, and then obviously the number of trades that are open now, which is coming from the M count variable. And then I just change that to volume. And that's all set to go, except that this get volume function doesn't exist. And I'm not going to put that inside the class here. I'm going to make that a function. And so I'm choosing to put this into a generic functions folder here and I'm still inside version 2.021. I've created a new file here called functions.mqh and I'm just going to put in this function for get volume. Uh, so this is fairly simple. I'm calculating the number of steps that I need to increment. And that's just the, nut, the count, total number of trades that I've got open, divided by the step count. And I'm just casting that as an int just to make sure that it is an integer. And then volume is just the initial volume plus the number of steps multiplied by the increment. So if I've got this right, then number of steps uh, where I've set the step count to be 3 that should be zero until I actually have three trades open. And then that means this steps will go up to one 
and so I'll only increment the volume as soon as I have three trades open and then I just return the volume. Now this will work mostly because in the inputs here I'm going to be specifying 0.01 and I know that that's going to be good for whatever the particular symbol is that I'm trading. But if I happen to be trading something and I maybe change to a different symbol where 0.01 doesn't quite work, it, it might be something that only goes up in 0.1 lot sizes, I really should normalize this. So I go back here. I should normalize that volume. So I will create a new function here to normalize the volume. There is a symbol info double with an argument symbol volume step. And this will tell you for the given or the supplied symbol what the increment is on the lot size each time. So if this is an incrementing a 0.01, then that will return 0.01. And if it's something that only has uh, integer volumes, then this will return a one. So once I've got that volume step, and I've entered the volume here that I want to normalize, then the volume is equal to the volume step multiplied by the integer value of dividing the volume by the volume step. And that should round this off to something that is an even multiple of this volume step. And then I return that volume. So that's my simple normalized volume. Uh, there is actually a more robust way to do this, but I don't think that's the point here. This will work in a lot of cases. So then I just update get volume. And that should be it. So let me now make sure I'll just try to compile the entire grid trader. I have some errors. I always have errors. What have I done? Ah, I forgot to include the functions here in the leg. again. All right, and now I can go on and run the tests. Now that I have all of that, it's time to run a test. So going back to the baselines, the volume increment factor is 0 0.01, the increment trade count is 3, the initial order size is 0 0.01. So that should mean, if I've done it correctly, that as I run this, when we get to the fourth trade open, it will open at 0 0.02 and that's the fourth trade on a single side so I'll run it in visual just to get some of those trades happening and once I can see those then I'll just run it through to the end and see how it goes but also as I've said with other cases the result that you get can depend on the inputs that you use so I'm not necessarily saying these are the optimum inputs for this I'm going to test with these and I'm going to set the result based on these values I've paused this now, so I have some buy trades open. There are three buy trades at a lot size of 0 0.01. And then I've got two buy trades at 0 0.02. I might just let it run further and see if I can get some more of those buy trades open. So now I've let it run on. I have three buy trades here at a size of 0 0.01. Then I have three buy trades at a size of 0 0.02. They're being a little bit obscured by the candles and then it's gone to 0 0.03. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. It's incrementing by 0 0.01 every time I have three trades open. And remember, this is still based on the code that closed all trades at an average profit. So that's why you can see here all of these trades closing at that point. So now I'm just going to stop the visual and let it run and see what we get as an end result for this. Well, that produced a very interesting graph. Uh, for most of the graph, you can see that the equity line is staying very close to the balance. We've got a couple of little dips here, but unfortunately, way back at the beginning, there is a very big dip. So obviously we had a strong move here in January 23, and there was no time to recover until we got well down. The drawdown was huge there. Uh, if I look at the actual numbers for the results though, Net profit, 11,261. That is by far the best profit of any of the grid trading examples I've tried. But the absolute drawdown is 6,694. And depending on your margin, that may well have blown your account. So that's 
not a good result uh, and that will mean that I'll put this at the bottom of my results list when I add it to the chart uh, simply because I've got a kind of two-step process the first is that I need an absolute drawdown less than a thousand and then I rank according to the profit so while this has the best profit so far it has an absolutely terrible absolute drawdown the maximum drawdown is not much different and in fact it's probably at the same point that's just a, one of those bad events if you can wear through that event so go back to the graph if you have enough capital so that this wouldn't have been a problem then this is a pretty good result I might run it one more time and I'll change the inputs I'm just going to change instead of incrementing every three I'm going to try incrementing every one okay well that didn't work out too well it uh, completely crashed I did think that maybe by incrementing it every one it would have had a chance to catch up on that lead faster but uh, the drawdown was just too much so now if I compare the charts for the baseline you can see that the main concern in the baseline was this level that I'm carrying trades at and the swap that I'll be paying on that and in the latest version where I'm incrementing the volume that is almost non-existent so it's achieved a lot in those terms the trades are simply not carried for as long of course the negative is that because I'm going into such large trades I'm getting this drawdown which is probably going to blow out most accounts uh, if you have a very large account then you can wear this but uh, generally this is a bad thing now I'll admit this happened because of a particular set of events in the market and if you're watching the expert run you may easily decide that you can handle that by stopping the expert or changing parameters while it's running but I for the purpose of these tests have to run everything blindly and I just run this from beginning to end as I said I'm putting this at the bottom of my list because the profit is high but the absolute drawdown is too large and the maximum drawdown is similarly large so this doesn't meet my criteria for being a smaller than $1,000 absolute drawdown and that puts it in the bottom group it's unfortunate the best profit but the worst drawdown of everything tried so far thanks for staying with me so far I'm just going to show you quickly something that is a programming technique that you may find useful in this particular case it's quite trivial and probably not required but if you apply this technique it might make some of your other code easier to follow uh, I am going to first just create a new copy of this version 2021 I've named the folder a but I'm not going to change the volume number inside the code this is just showing you a technique so I'm here in main I'm going to include the functions file here and then I'm going to go to that functions file and Initially, I just created get volume as a linear increment. I want to also have a get volume that is an exponential. The get volume exponential is the initial volume multiplied by one plus the volume increment raised to the power of the number of steps this is not what I'm trying to show you but that's something useful so now I have two get volume functions depending whether I want to use linear or exponential so what I naturally need is an input that lets me select between those two and I also then need something in config that sets an enum created an enum now for the increment method just get rid of that in the input then I'll add an input here to select that method I'm still not up to the thing that I wanted to show you yet but I now have an enum and an input for the increment method so you can choose between linear or exponential at the input stage obviously if you're going to make this exponential then the increment factor is going to be different to the factor that you would use if it's linear so that's up to you as the input to set this that's an appropriate value for the method that you select here in leg this is calling a function called get volume where did I put it there it is which no longer exists because in the functions I have changed get volume to exponential and linear and this is the thing that I want to show you
So I'm using this type def statement, and this defines, I guess, a pointer to a function. It's the easiest way to put it. The function has to return a double. The name of the definition is fgetVolume, and the arguments to that function must be a double, a double, an int, and an int. You'll see they are the same as these. Okay. Now that I've done that, now I go back to main. I've included functions here in main. Now I'm going to declare a variable of that pointer type. And the variable I've declared is called getVolume. So now with a switch statement, and remember I said this is a trivial example, increment method linear, get volume equals get volume underscore linear, the name of the linear function, get, sorry, get volume underscore linear. And if the method is exponential, then get volume equals get volume under exponential, underscore exponential. And now in leg, when I call get volume, it will be calling this variable, which is a pointer to a function, and that function happens to be either exponential or the linear function. Make sure I haven't made a typing error on that. Mr. Semicolon, where did I do that? Ah, should have been a colon there. Okay, so that is a little programming technique. Normally for something simple like this inside the code here in leg you would in leg you would probably have had something like volume equals if the input type is linear or if the input type is exponential. But if you've got something a bit more complex, this is a way that you can right up at the beginning of the code set these values and you don't need to execute that condition statement each time and you can worry about all of that logic in one place. So every place that you then call get volume. So if you're calling it more than once, no, in my case, I'm not, I said this was trivial, but if you're calling that in multiple places, they will all be calling the same get volume and you don't need to worry about repeating that logic of which of the get volumes do I call. So this is just a little programming technique that you may find useful in other cases. Um, I'm not going to include this in the GitHub. This was just an example for you but just something to remember. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, click that like button. It helps to get views and views help me to generate more code. And if you want to see the next video, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.